Out in the cold, the far-right National Front led the field in the first round of France's regional elections, but fails to maintain that momentum. Is the party losing support, or is this defeat just down to political maneuvering? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Hazem Sika. Well, France's far-right party says it will redouble its efforts after early gains in regional elections failed to bring the breakthrough it had hoped for. The National Front Party was riding high as voters went to the polls for the second round on Sunday. In the first round, a week earlier, it had been leading in six out of the 13 regions. That's all the areas highlighted in light green here. But in Sunday's runoff, the party lost it all. Most seats in regional councils across mainland France instead went to the centre-right Republicans and the Socialists. After the results, National Front leader Marine Le Pen said her party would keep on fighting. She said it was now the main opposition force in most regions. But can the far-right group bounce back from this disappointment? And what happened in the past week to cause such a poor showing? Well, we'll get to our discussion in just a moment. But first, Jackie Rowland sets up the story for us from Paris. It was a reversal of fortune for the far-right leader, Marine Le Pen. Her national front watched as its first round gains evaporated. For a moment, the party had looked well positioned to win several regions. But in the final round, French people decided otherwise. Le Pen tried to put a brave face on the outcome. But no. Now the separation is not between the right and the left, but it's between the globalists and the patriots. The globalists fight for the dilution of France and its people in a global amalgam, while the patriots believe that the nation is the protector of the French. And that's each and every one of you. Voter apathy in the first round had worked in the National Front's favour. But the turnout this Sunday was considerably higher, with nearly 60% taking part. Before these elections, the socialists controlled almost every region in France. Now the map is far more evenly divided between the Republicans and the socialists. It's clear that the Republicans, to an extent, benefited from tactical voting, because in two regions, the socialists had pulled out of the contest after the first round and instructed its supporters to vote for the Republicans in order to block the extreme right. Arriving to address his Republican party, the former president, Nicolas Sarkozy. There was no triumphalism, but rather a promise to learn the lesson of the first round. This mobilization in favor of our candidates must not, under any pretext, make us forget the warnings given to all politicians, including us, in the first round of the regional elections. The Socialist Party of François Hollande bounced back in the second round. The president has seen his personal popularity soar after the Paris attacks one month ago. Nevertheless, the socialist prime minister struck a cautious tone. There is no sense of relief or triumph, though, or victory. The danger of the extreme right has not vanished. Far from it. I cannot forget the results of the first round or recent years. I am conscious of my responsibility and that of my government. All that obliges us to listen to the French people more and act. This was the last time French voters would go to the polls before the presidential election. That is still more than a year away, and the evenly balanced outcome of these elections offers few clues as to the way ahead. Jackie Rowland, Al Jazeera, Paris. So lots to talk about there. Let's bring in our guests now. In Paris, we have Bruno Cortez, a researcher at the Center for Political Sciences Research from Sciences Po. Joining us from Coventry, David Lees, a researcher in French studies at the University of Warwick and a specialist on French right-wing policy. Also in Paris, Christian Macari, an editor of L'Express magazine and a French foreign policy analyst. Good to have you all uh, with us, gentlemen. So, uh, Bruno, if I could start with you then, what do you make of these results? 
Oh, the first point I would say is that the Front National did not win any regions, obviously, but it could be that the Front National still uh, can claim that he is uh, the, 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 the winner, the secret winner of that election. First, the Front National was leading the first round of the election, and because of the Front Républicain, uh, Marine Le Pen party is not going to have any executive in the French region, but Marine Le Pen, she's going to continue to claim that there is a conspiracy in France against the Front National, that the right and the left have decided to unify their efforts to make the Front National out of the system. So Marine Le Pen can continue to claim that she's the party of those people that are, been, that are excluded from the French system. The second point for me is concerning the Sarkozy party. The Sarkozy party have a majority of the French regions, but it's going to be a very tough period for Sarkozy. Anyway, Sarkozy is facing internal contestation within the Republican, its party, and it's going to be a tough period for Sarkozy. Finally, for the socialists, it's not such a good election. The socialist voting was very low in the first round, and still the socialist party has not any clear line what is the good direction for the next presidential election? If we talk about French economy, what is the perspective? Is Macron and Valls' perspective the perspective that the socialists want to continue with? Christian Makarian, what do you take from these results? And uh, how much do you think this is down to tactical voting? The point made by Bruno there that the two main uh, parties uh, essentially got together to keep out the, the National Front. Well, I would say that uh, there is a, a dynamic uh, aspect uh, inside the Front National. The, the Front National is dynamic, while the rest of the political land, landscape is on a, on a kind of self-defense position, is on a defensive position. So dynamic against a defensive uh, gesture, uh, it shows clearly that uh, nothing has changed in, in the political landscape. But one thing, the Front National is now one third of the electoral strength of the political French landscape. And that's very important to understand. It's not based on politics or on politician calculations. It's based on a very deep aspiration of the French people uh, for a clear alternative. And that's a question which is sent to the other parties, the Socialists and the Republicans. In other words, Hollande and uh, Nicolas Sarkozy. Hollande and Nicolas Sarkozy have decided uh, despite the aspiration of the French people to play again the presidential election like they did in 2012, the last time. That is to say, Hollande again and Sarkozy again. And the people, the voters, don't want this. So the question of the Front National is in a way relate, relative compared to this uh, very deep aspiration, a democratic aspiration. People want a significant change. And we see, uh, since yesterday, uh, an extreme embarrassment of the socialist and of the right. Sarkozy has to change all his headquarters. He has evicted the number two uh, because she criticized him and his line. Uh, Hollande and the socialists, we've heard uh, the leader of the Socialist Party asking for more left. So their answer is, on one side, more left, and on the other side, on the other side, more right. These are not answers to the, the, the political earthquake that happened with the Front National. So this appeals a, a, comp, a, 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 a complete change of the political landscape. Based on what? Based on the fact that there is a social, a sociological contest, contestation, a protest against uh, the elite. Uh, they can be socialist, they can be rightist, it's the same for the people. And as long as this sign is not heard by the politicians, the Front National will continue to gain and gain again. Yeah, David, David Lee, uh, you just heard Christian there talking about uh, th th this being an earthquake in, in French politics that we saw just a week ago with, with the uh, National Front's gains 
there, despite the fact that they've been shut out in this runoff, are we still feeling the tremors of this earthquake in France? Yes, I think we are. I think um, France is, is moving, uh, or seems to be moving gradually towards uh, the right anyway. Um, but certainly I'd say that the, the Front National uh, seems to have uh, solutions, political solutions, which uh, I agree with uh, both uh, Bruno and Christian. Uh, the Front National seems to have these uh, solutions that neither Nicolas Sarkozy nor Francois Hollande seem to actually have. Uh, and, and indeed both men, have, of course, have political power. Uh, what this allows Marine Le Pen and the Front National to do is to say, well, we still haven't had political power. You know, you still haven't had given us a chance to have this power. And so therefore we can still, you know, they can sort of turn around and say, well, actually, we, we haven't had this track record. Give us a go in 2017 and then we'll see how we get on. So I, I agree entirely. I think there is a, the, the, the shockwaves of, of last week's uh, vote will continue to, to rebound around France for some time to come. And I think this isn't really helped by the wider context particularly, of course, the attacks, the very tragic attacks last month in Paris, but also looking further back towards uh, January 2015 with the attacks on the Charlie Hebdo uh, newspaper. Really, France is, is looking for solutions. France and the French are looking for solutions which don't come from the mainstream. And it's particularly uh, really ties into themes like immigration. You know, Europe and France in particular is at the heart of, of what some are perceiving this to be a, a migrant crisis. And really, neither Sarkozy nor Hollande, the mainstream parties, seem to have the solutions. Whereas Marine Le Pen, particularly in the Nord Pas de Calais, seems to be talking to voters who really, really understand what she's saying. You know, she uses very plain terminology, very easy to understand uh, terminology, which actually many voters buy into. So I agree, this is, this is an earthquake which is going to go on for some time. All right, well, we'll talk about uh, some of those issues uh, a little bit more in just a moment. We want to give you a flavour, though, of what French voters have been saying about all this. They uh, had some mixed reactions to the National Front's loss. Here's what some of them had to say. Uh, oui, très soulagé. <laughs> I am very relieved. I think that the votes were equally shared between the right and the left wing, as per usual. And I don't think that the National Front will eventually get elected one day. We avoided a catastrophe. Voilà. But it would have been a good thing if one region had elected the National Front, simply to generate a reaction from all the other parties of government. I'm very happy that the National Front didn't win in any region. A bit disappointed that the Republicans slightly won over the Socialist Party, but rather satisfied by the results and by the mobilization of the French people. It's political maneuvering. Everyone positioned themselves against the National Front. It will never change. The other parties grouped together to form a barrier. That's what it is. The National Front got quite a lot of votes. They won some seats. Maybe one day that will change. So uh, just an idea there of, of uh, what some of the French public uh, have been saying. Let me turn back to you then, uh, Bruno. Uh, we heard um, as well f the, the French Prime Minister uh, Manuel, Manuel Valls talking about this, saying that we now have to take the time for an in-depth debate about what worries the French who expect strong and precise answers. What form do you think that debate should take? What, what do you want to hear from French politicians? So first, what was amazing on yesterday evening that was no one was clearly claiming for victory. Most of the French leaders on yesterday and TV decided to have a very modest profile, which is uh, we have to think about what happened on last Sunday. We have to organize a debate on the fundamental issues, on the f on really on the, uh, what, how to explain that situation that the Front National went so high. Uh, Manuel Valls, Nicolas Sarkozy, but also Alain Juppé and other leaders uh, got this profile on yesterday. Uh, we just don't know what is going to be that debate. I think that with some people start to say that it could be that there will be a political initiative within the Socialist Party. Some people would like that the Socialist Party reorganize itself to make it more popular. They have, they have, they have seen that the Front National voting was extremely high in those targets that normally are the targets of the Socialists, unemployed people, poor people, people with no job, per, no permanent job, people with the lowest level of education, the lowest level of incomes, and I think it's a very, very important issue for the socialists. What exactly happened to explain that poor people, working class is voting for the extreme right and not for the socialists? So probably the socialist party is going to face exactly like the Republicans of Nicolas Sarkozy, a big debate 
and a big debate on their main orientations. They cannot continue like that, and they know that if they continue like that, not only Marine Le Pen will qualify for the second round of the next presidential election, but even she could get a very good score. I'm not saying that she's going to win, obviously, but she could get a very big score anyway. So the big issue for the left and the big issue for the right is how to avoid the catastrophe that their candidate will not qualify for the second round. Yeah, what's your view on that, uh, Christian? I mean, it, it does seem that the Socialist Party in France is, is, uh, is the one, are the ones that are really taking a hit on this. Although uh, the president, Francois Hollande, his personal popularity uh, has risen because of the way uh, it, he's perceived to have handled uh, things since the, since the, the attacks uh, in Paris. But should this be seen as a, as a wake-up call to his party? Uh, popularity has nothing to do with credit. And uh, he has lost his credit from my point of view. He is popular, as you said, because of the attacks, and his reaction was the proper one. But in terms of uh, economic crisis, and in terms of crisis of the French model, there is no socialist strategy. There is no socialist alternative to the crisis. And it's the same thing for the right. The recipes of the right, the recipes of uh, Nicolas Sarkozy, are very old, and he, he doesn't propose anything new. So uh, the most important thing, if you want to fight the influence and the, the constant gains of the Front National, is to uh, relaunch the French economy. France weakens all the time for many years, and Nicolas Sarkozy couldn't stop this feeling of uh, decline. Uh, of course, uh, unemployment for three years raises all the time too. This uh, feeling uh, of the people, the feeling to be neglected, abandoned, and even despised by the dominant class, is very uh, important to understand what happens uh, with the Front National. People are not fascist, and they are not racist. Of course, there is a percentage of true racists among the Front National voters, but most of them are not. Most of them are simple citizens who want an alternative, a kind of dynamic, uh, something that could relaunch the French model. And they don't see anything coming. And the, the, the crisis and the malaise is there. And uh, I just give you an example. Uh, we are Monday. The election, the second round, happened yesterday. Today, Nicolas Sarkozy says that he wants to change all his uh, uh, headquarters, all uh, the responsibles of the party. Is that the true answer? And the socialists, on their own, they say, we must be more left. And this is absolutely inappropriate. These are not answers to the degree of uh, deepness of this crisis. All right. There must be something a new uh, politics, uh, a new, uh, new reforms and significant reforms, not only reforms on the question of uh, homosexuality or, or, or things that are important but All relative right. compared to the true uh, uh, situation David. of the French people, which is impoverishment. People are, power, are, are, are more and more poor, and this feeling... Oh, yeah explains a lot of things uh, okay. around the Front National. Let's, let's get David, David Lee's uh, uh, take on all of this. What do you think this means for, for French politics going forward? And the point's been made that uh, the, the Front National's rise has been on, built on this deep uh, dissatisfaction with mainstream politics uh, in France and, and among French uh, voters who are frustrated with uh, uh, President uh, Hollande's uh, policies and the, the economic problems as well, the inability to, to reduce unemployment and, and so on. What do you think needs to be done to address those concerns? Well, well I, first of all, I agree entirely. I think there's, there is a, a, a real lack of political solutions, actually. Uh, and I think it would be very helpful for both Nicolas Sarkozy and Francois Hollande to address, in particular, youth unemployment. There is a, a significant problem in France with, with graduates, for example, university graduates, having employment. 
So having a, a clear sense of, of direction for young people, uh, and in particular thinking about ways in which they might they might sort of be constructive, things like apprentices, uh, apprenticeships will be very will be very useful, I think. Um, but also addressing unemployment across the whole of the whole of the nation. France has, has particular pockets of unemployment, like any country, and really having sort of clear solutions based on each area, I think, would be very, very helpful. So, kind of regional approach, which you know, the whole idea of these regional elections is meant to help uh, different regions to sort of come up with their own policy, their own economic uh, planning in, in that region. So, I think more devolvement to those to those regions would be very helpful. I think more uh, emphasis on youth unemployment. And I also think uh, an emphasis on, on things like uh, teaching, you know, trying to increase the standards of teaching across France, which therefore would then in increase the skills uh, of French, French workers. I think that would be very helpful. When Francois Hollande came into office in 2012, you know, he promised a significant increase in teachers, for example, 60,000 new teaching posts. We haven't seen anywhere near like that, that number uh, created since Hollande took office. But I also think uh, what Sarkozy has done is he, he simply rebranded the, the former UMP uh, as Les Républicains. It's not really a significant change in, in the way uh, Sarkozy and the mainstream right operate. And I agree, actually, um, with, with what's just been said with regards to changing the, the personnel of the UMP, the former UMP. It's not really going to work. I think what really needs to happen here is a significant emphasis on, on changing the political strategy, changing the economic strategy of, of France, in particular uh, Francois Hollande. And I'd like to see Manuel Valls, uh, the Prime Minister, involved far more uh, in making key decisions and really sort of being the, the real uh, key player on the European stage. I think Valls needs to be really thrust to the centre of, of things, really. He is the man who may well have the solutions with regards to, to, to sort of looking to, towards the left in 2017. Uh, Bruno Coche, if, if you take the view that uh, the National Front was able to make the gains they did last week because they, they played on, on people's fears about immigration and terrorism and, and so on, is there a fear then, then that the, the, the other parties will simply uh, try, to tr try to copy that and, and just do it in a more palatable way? I'm not sure. I think that what is, uh, is going to be the problem for the Republicans of Nicolas Sarkozy, actually within that party you have basically speaking two strategies. One strategy is the one of Sarkozy which is talking to the Front National voters, saying that those people are right-wing voters that have been lost in going to the Front National. And then you have the other strategy which is the one of Alain Juppé, the former Prime Minister of France that would like to compare to get Sarkozy in the primary. And it's a fundamentally different one strategy. It is talking to the centrist, talking to the leftists that have been disillusioned with François Hollande. And we can see that now we have these two strategies that are going to confront to each other. It could be that if the Sarkozy strategy wins within the party, yes, they will go to on uh, talking to the Front National voters, Sarkozy will talk about national identity, he will talk about immigration, will talk about protecting the borders of France. So it could be that it's going to have that effect. I cannot see that within the socialist. The socialist has have another difficulty, which is uh, uh, quite also a big one, actually, on the economy. What is to be socialist on today in France? What does it mean to be a social democrat? On the economic side, is it a liberalization like Emmanuel Macron would like to do? Is it, on the contrary, redistribution? On yesterday evening, Jean-Christophe Jean Cambadélis, the leader of the party, the Socialist Party, was claiming for a change in the government policies. I cannot see the direction of the, the, the economic direction of French government uh, going in a new direction. I think that there is no choice now. They will keep on Manuel Valls, Emmanuel Macron lines, and let's see what is going on. But surely they will not get back the support of the uh, low middle class or the working class with this. All right, and on that note, we will have to leave it. It will be fascinating to see uh, what does happen. Uh, from here on. But uh, for the moment, I want to thank all three of you for being on Inside Story. Thanks very much for your time. And thank you for watching. As always, you can leave your comments to us on the program's page on our website, aljazeera.com, and you can post your views to us on facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. We're also on Twitter. Tweet us at AJ Inside Story. For me, Hazem Sika and all the team here, bye for now. <laughs>